Hi, I'm Lynn Samita. Last week, Paul Johnson wrote about fear being the obstacle to possibilities. And as we were talking about what other obstacles come up, it seemed that one of the most common ones is overwhelm. And it's certainly getting into that busy time of year for parents, for people in any kind of organization where you gear up for the end of June, the pace seems to pick up in May and go right through to June. So I thought I'd talk about three strategies that I've used and that I really believe in, in terms of dealing with overwhelm. And my very first thing that comes to mind when I think of overwhelm, the thing to do to me is get all that stuff out of my head because that's what's really jamming the system. And so I really like using mind mapping. Some of you may be very familiar with mind mapping, others may not be. So let me just tell you a little bit about it. Mind mapping is very different from list making. And many people use lists and write all the things they need to do and they're on their second and the third page and all that stuff. Mind map is different. It's gonna use the right hemisphere of your brain. It's associative. So you take a blank piece of paper and you just start dumping all the things that are in your brain out on the paper. Put them in little circles or boxes, whatever you want, but just put the items on the paper. What you're looking to do is get it out of your head, number one, and also relax your system so it can see the interconnection between different items. And so there may be finances that you're fussing about and that's a whole category. Maybe there's household things and all of that. There could be the work, there could be the kids, there could be planning for the summer. You may have categories, if so, do a circle, put the name in and just put items that go with that. But it will allow your brain to see the big picture and allow you to get a lot of data out all in one place with a feeling I found of relief as opposed to when I'm making the list, it's almost like I have the dread of going through that list and then needing to check it all off. What the researchers have found is when you do that, your brain can also make connections between items on the page so that you can be more creative, so you can also see connections and maybe be more efficient. So it's a lovely strategy. For parents, I remember using this when Timothy, our son, needed to write a paper. Writing wasn't his strong suit. He felt totally jammed around it and of course had left it to the last minute and came home and said he had to do this. And I said, well, okay, why don't we mind map it? And it was like, oh God, mom. And I said, well, if you want help, I'm here. If you don't, okay, okay, okay. I said, so get a piece of paper. I said, what's the topic? We put it in the middle. And I said, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of that topic? And he said something and we just put a little blob right there on the paper. And then we wrote the next idea. And as we started to do it, his brain seemed to click in and he started to have information and then he had a story to go with this one item. And that's how he wrote his paper. He got all the information there and then it was easy to write it. Okay, second strategy that I absolutely love as well is called the Swiss cheese strategy. So any big job that really feels pretty daunting one of the things you can do is Swiss cheese strategy. So if any of you know Swiss cheese, it's mostly made up of holes. So you've got these big holes in the piece of Swiss cheese. That's what you're gonna do with the project or the task. Take a little bite out of it. Time limit it. Give yourself 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever it is, just give a short chunk of time that you could work on that and then insist that you quit as soon as the time's up. That will get going the feeling of, yeah, but I wasn't quite finished. And that's what we want. Then take another little bite, another time chunk. After a while, you will have nibbled away enough big elements that it'll be easy to finish. So Swiss cheese strategy, great one. And the third thing that I really believe in is when we're feeling overwhelmed, let's use our natural momentum and our natural inclination for what we do want to do within all the stuff we need to do. So find one thing that you actually feel like doing, that there's some joy, some energy that goes with it. 
let yourself start there. So you pick up the joy, you pick up the momentum, and it's really about starting to trust yourself that if you get into the energy and the momentum, you will keep going. And I know that that's a risky thing. Many people do not trust themselves. We see people all the time as clients, one of whom, or one of the things they want to work on is procrastination. And so when you've been a procrastinator, you don't have faith in yourself. But underneath, what you need to do is connect with really what does bring joy. And when you do that, that will free up some energy to keep going to the tasks that really are more challenging. Okay, so I hope that those strategies are useful. We want to give things that are both interesting and mentally challenging, spiritually nourishing, but also everyday stuff that you can just use. So mind mapping, Swiss cheese, and joy. Those are the three for today. Please be in touch with us. Let us know how you think, what you think of these strategies. Tweet, send out messages, put it on Facebook. We love to have people connecting with us. Thanks for listening.